Okay, yeah, so I've been working in invasive species management for about eight years now, um, and my focus is really on the monitoring and research side of things, and uh, working a lot with uh, cats on offshore islands at the moment. Bruny Island is a real hot spot for biodiversity, so anything we can do to try and improve that and maintain that I think is really important. And, and controlling the feral cat issue is probably one of the key things that we can, we can do to try and maintain biodiversity on Bruny Island. So on Bruny Island, uh, we're currently tracking cats with GPS collars, um, and it's giving us a lot of really interesting and new information on where cats are living, how far they're ranging over the island, uh, and how they're interacting with other cats. And, and that really feeds into management and how best we can manage that species on the island. Here we have uh, one of the GPS collars that we've been attaching to feral cats and at, at the neck and at North Bruny. Uh, so the, the collar is made up of a couple of different pieces and the main collar part is very similar to a collar that you'd put on a domestic cat. At the bottom here we have a VHF transmitter that allows us to pick it up using a VHF aerial. Um, and lets us know the direction that the animal is living in and the GPS component is only a small part of the collar attached up here with a, quite a small aerial and that gives us a really accurate reading of where the cat is. To get a GPS collar on a cat requires a lot of effort and it starts off in the office where we have to work up an animal ethics application and get animal ethics approval to be able to do the work. Um, then from there we move out into the field and we have a team of people that we're trapping with and a vet to be able to anaesthetise the animal once we capture an animal. Um, there's a range, we have to work with a range of cats, so we need specific cats of a specific weight to be able to put the collar on that animal. Once the collar goes on, we have like a few weeks of monitoring to make sure the collar is sitting well on the cat and the cat is be able to maintain its normal sort of life with the collar. And then from there we move into a phase of monitoring where we're starting to collect the really useful information on what the cat's actually up to. We've gathered some really interesting information on what the cats are doing around the neck area and what we've really found is that um, a m number of the cats are moving really quite far away from the neck so they're travelling up to six to seven kilometres away from the neck either for hunting or for searching for mates so that's something that we had no idea about and we've also found that the cats are staying in the neck even though the mutton birds and penguins really aren't here this time of year and so that's really let us know that those cats are residing in those areas. And another little interesting fact we found out is that they're actually going out onto the low tide mark on the channel side of the neck and they're feeding at the low tide line as well as on the beach side. Um, so they're, they're using the marine environment as well as the terrestrial environment to sustain themselves. So the three cats were collared around the neck here and as you can see the yellow and the red um, is a female cat and the red is a young male cat. We've got quite small home ranges and one of the cats, a male cat has ranged all the way out to Cape Queen Elizabeth, probably about four to five kilometres away. He's visiting a shearwater rookery out here. The collaring of the cats, the GPS collaring of the cats, really feeds into the management of the feral species in the long term. So what we're finding is that the cats are moving in a, in, a, in a particular pattern that we can then model through time and we can best be able to target those species in the long term. So what we're really looking for are vulnerabilities in the cat's ecology on the island. Are they moving into certain areas on certain seasonal basis and can we target those areas to try and remove cats from the island? So the, the collaring really, really helps with the ongoing management of the species. Together with the GPS collaring, uh, we're also deploying a range of camera sites across North Bruny, and they work together. So we, we, that part of the project is really a monitoring component of the project. Setting out the cameras, we're trying to get an understanding of density of feral cats across North Bruny. The collaring, the GPS collaring work can work into that, in that we understand how far cats range and where they might come from when they're detected on those cameras. Prior to this, we wouldn't have an understanding of our density estimates and what area that is over. With the collaring included in it, we can understand that better and model that a bit better. Okay, to get a better understanding of uh, feral cat densities across the entire part of North Bruny, um, I've divided North Bruny up into 20 different one kilometre square grids, and we've tried to get a good spatial distribution across the whole entire part of North Bruny. So they're not all clustered into one area, they're spread right across the, the um, the, the island, and what we're what we're hoping to get is a gradient or 
are measures of cap density at each one of these points to see if it changes across as you move from north to south. And what we've done is we've laid cameras out across this whole entire site. So we've got six camera sites across here um, and those, those cameras are deployed for about a month. Today I have some preliminary data on some of the southern sites that we've already surveyed and what we're finding is there's actually quite a few cats in these areas, more than what we expected. And that includes right the way up into Murrayfield and getting sort of midway up North Bruny.